VR, frame VR screen is projected on the room uh, large screen here. And hopefully, yeah, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to cu curate that. Yes, people, by the way, just to explain to those of you who kindly joined this forum, we're doing it in a web VR space called Frame VR, and our presenters are there already. We are streaming it on Zoom and at the same time also projecting it on the screen here. So if you have any questions later, you can come up here and speak through uh, the mic on my device here. So that would be great. Thank you for joining us. Everybody can hear uh, in the room, I suppose. Yes, we're Perfect. on the room speaker, so. Beautiful. Thank you for help setting that up, Minasa. Oh, no worries. Another lady here helped with that. <laughs> <laughs> One of the pink shirt ladies. All right, uh, we're counting down. I'm going to start off in about one minute, everybody. One minute to start. Would it be better for me to move closer to the screen when people are talking? Maybe this gives a better view. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, it is live. People are already. I am on this space too, by the way. So there are nine people. If you'd like me to show you the list of participants, like you see on Zoom, for example, the same thing pretty much here. So Amini, Adam, Rob, another Adam, <laughs> one more Adam. <laughs> What's going on? I think Adam is on two devices. Nick, Eric, Yukie, and myself, Nerasa, on top. So we're the ones present in this space now. And if I wanted to show you around, we are in a lecture hall, a virtual lecture hall, with uh, the people I just named represented as avatars, as you see here. And we will be doing our presentation. I mean, I'm not presenting, but our presenters will be doing theirs within this space. But at the same time, we're able to hear that in the physical room as well. It was hard to figure out which people would be joining. Otherwise, we would have sent you an invite. You need to be invited through um, by providing your email address in advance. But we're happy that you can hopefully ask your questions here or just come here and through this device do that later. OK. So, sorry, can I just ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, Yes. Okay. Yes, it could. It could. Eric, I think, is I the owner of this room. He could invite you if you wanted to, but I'm not sure how how busy he is at the moment. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's, uh, if uh, I, 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 I can do that if uh, somebody wants to send me. I'd we'd like to get started though too, if it's all right. I'll make some. I'll make those announcements right now. That's all right. Is that all right? Everybody ready to get started? Is that all right? Yes. All right. Yes. All right, everybody, welcome to MAVER Research Forum 2022 uh, as a part of JALT National Conference held in Fukuoka, Japan. This is the MAVER SIG Forum. We have our MAVER SIGs. My name is Eric. I am the coordinator for our SIG. We have a, a great lineup for you today. I'm going to be hosting and moderating this great session of speakers and a roundtable discussion towards the end. First, I'd like to give you a couple of announcements and some logistics so we can 
enjoy and get the most out of our session and time today. First of all, Maver, Mixed, Augmented, and Virtual Realities in Learning is a special interest research group based in Japan. We have probably a small but very active group. Uh, we are probably, if not the smallest, one of the smallest SIGs in the JALT organization, but we have a very active membership. I would probably guess that our publication to membership ratio is might be the highest <laughs> uh, also in the JOLT organization. Uh, as we go through and talk today, we just let you know the, the process from which we are providing our talks today. We're all here in virtual reality. I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, I'm being projected onto the screen from my home studio here in Kyoto. We have some live participants in Fukuoka on the uh, venue site for JOLT National. And uh, there are some people in the room, and we have some J Maver officers in the room that will help curate your questions as you're in the room as well. We're also broadcasting on YouTube Live, as well as uh, some other channels. So there are some people that will possibly give some questions or comments uh, on those public live streams as well. If you have a question during the the presentation we're going to come we're going to have three presenters over the course of today they're going to go 20 minutes about 20 minutes each uh, we're going to ask you to hold your questions or type your questions into your relative chat either on zoom or hold them if you're in the physical room or you can put them into the youtube live comments as well and we're going to help curate those questions at the end for a round table open discussion for about 20 minutes after each speaker has presented. You can also visit and see all of the slides from our presenters today. You see their bios and information at maver.site. And you can join our social media conversations from here forward just by using the hashtag maver uh, on most, we're pretty active on most social media platforms, probably most active on Facebook. Uh, my name's Eric, uh, I'm based in Kyoto. Um, I'm helping to coordinate for our research group, and um, I'll be doing my best to host and moderate today's proceedings. Uh, our Maver team has been working hard to put this all together. Uh, Mirasa, Bobby, Josh, Adam, and myself are the officers, and we hope that uh, if you're watching this today and you're a Maver member or th thinking of becoming a Maver member, we encourage you to reach out to us to join the more active group or the officer core of Maver, uh, so we can take more of an active role in our organization. So these are some of the names that helped facilitate and bring everything together for today. And we've been doing some things that I'd like to share with you. Namely, we just put out a journal, um, thanks to uh, Robert Figueroa, we call him Bobby. He was the, he is our, our chair of publication and he helped do a quite a bit of editing on our journal that came out uh, last month. There's a couple of research articles and news uh, in newsletter form about Maver presentations, projects, development apps, and things that our membership is doing. So please go on to maver.site and take a look at that uh, journal if you should want to take a look at some of the research things that we're doing. I also like to congratulate Bobby. Robert Figueroa for winning the Best of Jolt Award from the Maver SIG. He has uh, been a member since the beginning, uh, forming this SIG about six years ago. And uh, he has been key, especially last year and this year, in our activities around um, trying to more internationalize our group. Uh, he returned back to the Philippines, and we've been working on a bunch of things together on either research and other things like that. Coming up, uh, if this kind of event interests you, we have some other things coming up around the corner. Um, here in Kyoto, we are building a, an immersive lab and also a sister lab at the University of the Philippines where, where Bobby is running a new lab there. And we're spinning up a bunch of new physical spaces to use augmented and virtual reality in different learning contexts. And so we're gonna be trying to put together a, a smaller symposium early next year. And uh, PANSIG is one thing that Mavers 
pretty much we always do a forum there every year as well. And this year it is in Kyoto where I'm based. So we're hoping we haven't quite planned out everything quite yet. We're hoping to actually liaison with Nick that's here in the room. He's actually going to be uh, probably key in our plannings for that moving forward as well. So these are things coming around the corner. Uh, if you should be interested in joining our upcoming events coming soon. Okay. Um, are there any other questions before we get started? All right, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna share the slides like this. All right, um, I'm gonna now ask each of our presenter presenters to come up one by one and give uh, their talks. Um, I'm very excited about our lineup today. Uh, we have a bunch of new faces. Um, because we have a fairly small group with Maver, we often end up presenting to each other, quite honestly, a lot. And we're very familiar with each other's work and projects. So this is very exciting for a lot of us Mavers because we're getting to see some, some uh, fresh ideas and some new faces uh, with today's presentations. Uh, let me first introduce our first speaker then, uh, Amani Alkyat uh, from Columbia University, PhD candidate. She's at the Teachers College there. Uh, we met uh, through iLearn, which is another uh, immersive learning research group. She's going to be presenting activities and communities in XR research. And so you can see there's a theme around this. We're trying to build communities. One of the reasons we're doing the forum in this way is we want to help synergize and collaborate members and people doing research in this space. So we want to help facilitate you guys supporting each other in our endeavors. And so... Uh, a lot of our, I asked some of our speakers to talk about not only what they're doing as far as their projects, but also the communities that they're involved in to help create uh, more networking opportunities for all of us in this space. All right. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like please to welcome Amani up to the stage area to give her presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Eric, and thanks everybody uh, for having me. Um, it's really a great uh, honor to have to be here among the uh, Maver uh, Research Forum. Uh, and um, I'm so excited uh, to talk about uh, the projects and I hope I can talk about all of them. Um, and so um, I think I can move the slides from here. So my journey um, started from uh, 3D virtual worlds uh, to, to social VR platforms and also VR like learning Unity and, uh, and stuff like that. And so um, the first in encounter with VR was Second Life in 2009 when I like made my own, my first avatar. And then, um, and then I fell in love with the, another thing. It's not a social VR platform or a, a, it's, it's a 3D programming language, which actually um, it's not that well known like Scratch that that's by MIT University, but it, it's called the um, Storytelling Alice. And Storytelling Alice, it's a, it's a block-based program, programming language that's easy for, for kids and for high school students and middle school students to understand the programming. And so I was teaching my, my second language learners and, uh, and we had this youngster summer club and um, they learned it really fast and they started to create their animations. And I felt like I was actually, I published a research paper on teaching speech acts. Um, so I compared the traditional method of teaching um, speech acts, like agreeing, disagreeing and stuff like that versus doing that in, in a 3D environment where the, the kids create animations. And so, um, um, fast forward, when I came to America, um, I, um, I realized that I was a member of uh, New York State TESOL and uh, we had like great uh, special interest groups, but we didn't have one that specialized uh, in technology. And so I asked the, uh, the president and everybody, the executive board that we, we need to have, and that was before the pandemic. Um, I had activities prior to that, but I'm just trying to focus on um, uh, projects uh, that relate to like North America. 
And so uh, we started the, uh, I founded and chaired the Technology Enhanced Language Learning Special Interest Group, and that was before the pandemic. And I was really excited and uh, we're going to do VR, we're going to do uh, artificial intelligence. But we found out that teachers were not that motivated. And um, it's kind of, um, uh, I forgot that I'm an instructional designer as well, and I should um, understand the user uh, needs and user personas. Mm -hmm. So we kind of stopped, paused for a while until the pandemic erupted and everything, all the dreams became true. So uh, we uh, partnered um, with educators in VR and uh, they they really they really I I'm, I always I'm always in indebted to them because they supported us in this uh, new special uh, interest group and um, and they provided us us with all the workshops that we wanted and then I became later one of their uh, co leaders and uh, the following year in 2021 we started uh, the virtual hotel uh, conference so and the virtual hotel conference was all about technology. VR, um, AR, artificial intelligence, all emerging technologies that would prepare teachers. And we realized that uh, teachers' reluctance to use technology, it's its because of assumptions. Uh, uh, usually, usually teachers would say, no, I'm not a tech person. And then when the pandemic erupted, everybody had to be you know, tech savvy in a way. And then they appreciated the way and they actually, those teachers used to say, well, no, we're not tech savvy. They, uh, they started and they were so proud of themselves using technology and pedagogy at the same time. Um, and I'm saying uh, integrating pedagogy at the same time. One of the well-known activities in the, um, in, in it's, it's North America and Europe and also Asia. Uh, we have many attendees uh, from everywhere. Um, is the uh, TESOL International Electronic Village uh, Online. And I was honored to be part of um, the, that uh, project, um, uh, especially with great people like Heike Philp, uh, Doris Molero, Helena Galani, uh, Randall Sadler, he's the president of Calico, um, and, and others. And um, we started with um, immersive storytelling uh, in, in terms of... Uh, so, so actually, these, these great people, they, they usually do... Um, like immersive training and second life and um an open sim but uh, we uh, like i because i'm i'm always uh, passionate about vr uh, they uh, they also introduced uh, alt space vr um, um uh, frame vr uh, spatial and also engage vr uh, and also the 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 following year we did the immersive building and uh, uh, this year, I can't see, um, but I'll, um, this year we're, we're going to do immersive learning experiences in the metaverse. And this is going to start uh, January 9th, 2023. So uh, usually these workshops are uh, uh, like five weeks. Uh, and uh, it's kind of uh, tinkering with technology. Uh, and uh, towards the end, the teachers create uh, their own immersive experiences, kind of, kind of like competition, but the uh, the uh, these workshops are kind of like how to design, and uh, more of discussions and tinkering with with technology, and so it was really a great experience working with uh, Evo, uh, the Electronic Village uh, Online, uh, where we train teachers from uh, across the globe. Like usually, we have like over a hundred teachers um, uh, signing up for these. Uh, for these workshops. Yeah. Uh, the second one is uh, is called Jigsaw Island. It's uh, it was a finalist for for Gamecon. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a conference, uh, usually held in in Texas, and um, and the uh, Jigsaw Island is um, like it's it's um, it's a game or it's like it's a gamified experience in in frame VR. And uh, it's based on computer-supported uh, collaborative learning techniques, which is like Jigsaw, the Jigsaw activity. And it's more of an um, escape room game. So level one is an escape room game mm -hmm. where learners, which are teachers, so those, those are who are uh, the teachers, 
they are uh, kind of uh, like they are in this in, in this island and they can't escape and they have to go through so they have to so frame vr allows only 15 people to interact with with objects and so uh, the this um um this pirate is going to give them instructions because the pirates have kidnapped these people in in terms of the story and then they can't go inside the pirates and um and the, the learners have to go so that's why it's called jigsaw and the five learners sh should go through each door and then they will have to learn about how to teach in vr uh, from an adult learning uh, from adult learning theories perspective so this game was designed to teach uh, teachers the theories uh, that they need to, to learn about in order to design uh, and have informed uh, decisions about designing for learning and how to understand how students learn. And uh, the second level is they will go, they will, you know, set free and uh, and they will go to the second level. And because of the jigsaw activity, they will be regrouped and then they will design their own uh, their own activities based on a certain certain instructions. Um, so um, as I said before, and I mentioned educators and VR. Uh, we have the uh, VIA Languages uh, team, uh, which is um, a team that's concerned uh, with um, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, uh, um, uh, uh, and language learning. So Educators in VR, uh, I think it was founded in 2018, and uh, they have lots and lots of uh, special interest groups, and the VIA Languages um, team is one of them. And I was honored to co-lead the, um, uh, the team with um, Katrina Semenyuk. And also we have the usually one of the co-founder, uh, co Norel Van Hossen, usually she's like, she accompanies us with uh, most of the, uh, of the workshops. And um, what's interesting about these meetups is that we meet with teachers, as you can see in the, in the slide and the, um, we discussed how we can how can we can teach in VR, and um, there are actually worlds that were built uh, by educators in VR. And uh, one of the co-leaders who who left us, um, Michael McDonald, so he built uh, several uh, worlds in uh, Alt Space VR, and uh, these worlds, uh, some of, many of them are interactive. I think all of them are interactive. And um, so you can have like the kitchen, um, a place for uh, the mechanic, a car, car parts. Uh, this this area also we can talk about memories of childhood. Um, uh, and so uh, this has been a great opportunity to understand how to um, to teach in VR and to understand teachers' perspectives. Um, so sometimes we held like every month we have a world tour in which we showcase worlds that have been built for um, for language learning. Imagine taking your students to, um, you know, several places that probably they may not have or were able to see and interact with, uh, with these objects in VR and probably tell stories um, that probably relate to their prior experience and, and stuff like that. Uh, the next slide is actually a research paper that will be submitted soon. Uh, it's a study that I conducted. And um, I love uh, Henrik Ibsen and his, uh, his novel, uh, A Doll's House. And it has a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of metaphors and symbolism that relate to uh, inequality, uh, gender inequality. And, um, um, and my students were really affected. So I had like control group and experimental group and it's really interesting. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about it because it's really that what they wrote really affected me uh, personally, uh, especially the students who were in VR. And this will be published as uh, uh, hopefully if I get accepted as a research paper uh, versus the students who watched only the video and learned about. Uh, so really, really, some people talk about VR and say it's the empathy machine, which is really I think it is. Um, language Cities is, is a project. It's a game.
for language learners uh, in VR. And um, it, it's like, um, it's based on lots of theories, like, and the uh, hypotheses like Krashen's hypothesis, uh, culturally relevant pedagogy. And uh, we hope that it's it will be up and running soon, um, <clears throat> probably uh, next year. So um, it's, it's kind of a dream. Um, uh, it's like combining uh, virtual reality and conversational design uh, in a way that would motivate students to learn more. And uh, if you would like to know more about it, you can just type languagecities.com and you can just fill uh, a form and we can contact you and, um, and tell you more about, about this game. Um, yeah, uh, I can't see the slides, so I'm gonna just open mine. Um, yeah, so uh, currently I'm working on a, a project uh, so actually, my dissertation is not on VR. It's actually on conversational AI uh, applications like GPT-3, Pandora Bot, and how this can motivate students to learn uh, and improve their language learning. And um, since that I've seen a few apps in VR, uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm st I started working on uh, uh, on some of these projects. Um, uh, that would um, engage students in VR and see whether they will be engaged with uh, a virtual assistant and which with the, with certain uh, certain character uh, or not and what type of character would um, would make the students motivated. So some uh, of the uh, research that I've done before, uh, like pilot projects, uh, I realized that students prefer a character that's different from Siri or, um, or Alexa. And so um, um, it's, it's really interesting to find the, like to create an environment in VR and have like an avatar that's not human, but uh, that can communicate with, uh, with students and, um, and then um, kind of like um, encourage them to to, to talk more and uh, and um, help them with vocabulary and and grammar um, there are lots of projects that I'm, I'm working on so I am currently the um, the social events uh, committee uh, chair at the I learn uh, conference that's the immersive learning research network and we started um, the the um, um, uh, Metaverse Adventures, which is, uh, it's, it's like a um, podcast. And also um, we, we, we record, uh, we have a video also. Um, uh, and uh, we kind of in, in, uh, like invite uh, educators who create VR experiences uh, uh, for education. And um, we, we're trying to explore what works in VR and what type of learning experiences uh, encourage students and make them learn better and um and um so th this this started last year and we were we were successful in uh, interviewing um like we've interviewed five people so far uh web3 um uh and the uh, vr vr experts and uh, we we are looking forward to introduce uh, more people uh, so we started that in the conference uh, last May, and uh, we're working on um, doing more projects to involve uh, educators at the Immersive Learning Research Network. And I really um, invite you all to uh, apply for, for the conference because it's, it's really great and uh, the papers are published in, uh, accepted papers are published in IEEE. And also there's an awesome thing that they really do, which is the practitioner track. And uh, the practitioner track is not, uh, it's like, you know, practical ideas, which is, uh, which is really great uh, for educators to read. Uh, one of the projects that I'm currently working on, it's, uh, it's a programming project, which is Beautiful Mind. And uh, this project was actually one of the things that really influenced me because when we started the project, my team where they, they started with a storyboard. And then I said, well, from an instructional design perspective, you have to interview people first. 
before um but uh, before like starting the design and uh, i'm always honored and and feel lucky that i work with with great people and so we uh, the the beautiful beautiful mind is for uh, adults with adhd and uh, each one of us is programming a scene in unity and uh, we have uh, been helped by an instructor because this is part of a course but also it's kind of a passion um, that we visited uh, the, the neurodivergent uh, events in uh, in all space VR. They told us lots of great stories, and um, and uh, according to their stories, we actually developed the the application. Um, Six Power Steps is um, is an application that I helped design. Uh, it's a VR app that I helped design for research, and it was funded by a Saudi university. And uh, and uh, I like it was like myself and an American friend and professors from this university. So it's kind of collaboration between North America and Saudi Arabia. And um, and Six Power Steps is uh, is an application that helps students, especially that was during the pandemic, and it helps students overcome anxiety, uh, P uh, PTSD, and uh, all of the symptoms that many people have gone through uh, during the, the pandemic um i think now it's my time it's 12 09 a.m so i think um yeah i should stop here so thank you so much for listening and for attending uh my talk and uh, i'm so honored to be here today and these are my this is my linkedin uh, barcode and uh, and also this is my twitter and if we would like to know anything about any of the projects that i mentioned I would be happy to uh, connect with you. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right, everyone, let's give how many a great round of applause there. We can hear you in the room there giving an applause too. Um, there is so much to unpack with this. We can already tell that. Uh, how many, like a lot of us in Maver, have our we have connections with so many other organizations all around the world? So the, just a couple of that were mentioned were educators in VR, um, the Immersive Learning Network, uh, uh, Language Village, I think was another one that was mentioned, and she's it's got a ton That's of projects. Electronic Village. Electronic Village, yes, thank you, mm -hmm. Electronic Village, and. Tons of projects, uh, and I, just speaking from experience, uh, she's very open to collaborating. So if any of these projects, like the Jigsaw Island or Dollhouse or Beautiful Mind, Six Power Steps, and there was a couple of them there, and I couldn't catch them all, but um, please reach out to her uh, if you want to find out more and to just get connected with her. So th let's give her one last round of applause when we move on to the next person. All right. If you, if, you've, uh, if you have questions specifically for uh, Amani, please uh, hold them to the end. We're going to try to get through all of our presenters before we uh, have our discussion at the end here. Uh, next presenter, I'd like to welcome up uh, Nicholas J. Wilson from A to Z Corporation Public Education Department. Um, he is, I know, fairly... Uh, active in JALT. Uh, he's going to be working with PANSIG for next year. Um, he's fairly new to Maver, so I can't, um, we, we haven't spent a lot of time personally together, so I, I can't tell any stories about him, but I have seen some of his work. He's been doing some stuff with um, um, gamified um, multiplayer worlds. Um, I think Together Town was something that he's been experimenting with as well. So today's uh, presentation that he's going to give us overcoming the distance students collaborating in the metaverse and we're very happy to have nick with us today all right nick, thank you eric thanks thank you and yes i'm the new guy in uh, maver so <laughs> there's still lots we can talk about from now on uh yes so basically my topic the title is very uh important um, it's about overcoming the distance and students collaborating in the metaverse. So when we talk about the metaverse, especially lately, there's been a lot of talks and, you know, problems and the boom, whether it's something that can be useful in the future or, or whatever. And 
the main difference probably in my case is I don't work with the university students. Uh, I teach at elementary and junior high schools. So my main uh, research is basically trying to figure out how we can use these virtual realities uh, to connect students, uh, young learners. Uh, in my case in particular, um, we basically, what I was trying to focus more is not COVID. So because of Corona, of course, even schools had to close down. Uh, we had to rely more and more on apps like uh, Zoom, like uh, Google Meet, and so on. And as I was working with the students in this kind of environment, what I noticed it, it was that basically we were, have, we were basically teaching the opposite of what we've been trying to achieve in the classroom. Especially with young learners now, it's all about student-centered learning. It's all about having students work together in groups, collaborate, uh, kind of like have more input from them and less teaching talking time. However, uh, when we started using Zoom and apps like me, basically, it's, it's appearing on my. Basically, uh, what happened was that we were having a lot of like teacher talking time. And the students were just basically sitting there on mute. And so basically the entire opposite of what the, the classroom is. And so seeing that, looking at that situation, I started thinking, how can we kind of like change the situation? And of course, uh, Zoom has breakout rooms. But simply putting students inside breakout rooms wasn't really changing anything. Uh, basically, they were just like sitting there, uh, basically idling, just uh, everybody with their cameras off, their mics off, and so on. So that really wasn't changing anything. Uh, so basically, I started looking into the concept of metaverse. And if you can move to slide number four, page four, uh, next one. Yes. So basically, uh, the situation is, uh, we're, this is not university. We're talking about uh, public schools. So if we have to implement something new, uh, the first thing, it has to be something that you can realistically use in a classroom. Uh, we don't have uh, budgets, we don't have uh, research funds or anything like that. So the whatever has to be tested needs to be easily uh, implemented and also as hopefully uh, not expensive or kind of like just uh, with a very low budget. Uh, one more thing, uh, thanks to the Giga School project, all students now have their own uh, devices. Uh, either Chromebooks or uh, uh, iPads. But the biggest challenge here is that those devices have really low specs. So it's not like you can set up very specific 3D applications or anything like that. Otherwise, they'll, they'll just freeze. Uh, and one more other thing, there has to be a clear goal when you implement this. So what were we trying to achieve? What was the main goal by, what, were, what is, the purpose of introducing the metaverse in the classroom. Uh, let's go, if you can go to page five. Uh, the biggest challenge, as I was saying, was that students were really not interacting with each other, simply being like uh, squares or rectangles inside an app uh, as the standard uh, video conference apps wasn't really uh, bringing anything to the conversation. However, one of the main features of a metaverse environment is that uh, users interact with each other through avatars. Uh, by using avatars, uh, basically, and this is something that we actually uh, had the feedback from the students uh, after doing a couple of uh, test runs at the end of last year, was that students basically said it feels very natural, uh, especially when you consider that they have spatial audio and video it means that the students really walk to each other and they can start uh, chatting, uh, discussing. 
So by simply adding that kind of movement already made the difference for the students. Uh, one more thing was that uh, another problem was with the black screens, right? So everybody just keeping their cameras off. And I mean, uh, it, this is also happening in university. There are different reasons why students don't want to show, uh, don't want to turn on their cameras, uh, also because of privacy or whatever uh, with their uh, rooms and so on. Some might also be shy and don't want to kind of still have that kind of uh, uh, kind of like, I wouldn't say anxiety, but kind of. So by using avatars, it still feels like they're talking to somebody. And these avatars, depending on the platform, I'm not, this time I'm not going to go specifically into which kind of apps I've been testing, but depending on the platform, it also allows for a pretty uh, specific, pretty detailed uh, uh, personalization, colors and uh, uh, kind of like uh, clothes and so on. And that's also a kind of self-expression. It's a way for students also to kind of like give a representation of themselves that they wouldn't, uh, they couldn't achieve even in the real world. Uh, also classroom dynamics. By having people actually moving inside this digital world, even the teachers have a different point of view. It's not just the teacher talking all the time, but they can see the students that they can start giving very specific directions like, hey, go sit at the desk or move to this corner. Kind of like the same kind of uh, uh, indications that they would be giving in the classroom. And last thing that the students really pointed out is freedom. Of course, when you're using apps like uh, standard video conferencing apps, you're basically just being pushed around between the main room or the breakout room. Instead here, they have the freedom to misbehave, let's say. They have the freedom to reach out to, other, to move to other groups. They have the freedom to talk immediately just one-to-one -one with uh, either the teacher or another uh, classmate. And that kind of uh, element, it's probably one of the biggest points that students really noticed compared to standard uh, video conferencing apps. Uh, let's go, if you can move to slide six. So as I said, uh, there has to be a clear goal. For us, uh, when I tried to set up this in my schools, uh, my goal was to try and not only uh, get back that kind of like uh, student-centered environment uh, that was lost uh, using standard apps, but also try to find new ways, even having the students in the classroom, but to collaborate to other, with other people as well. So what uh, I set up, thanks to also the company I work for uh, that has connections with the uh, numerous board of education in Nagarno Prefecture, was that uh, for the first time, we had the opportunity of connecting classrooms. Uh, not just uh, simply like video conference, just like, hey, this is a screen, just uh, talk to each other like that. But creating, giving the students the opportunity of working in groups effectively with peers that they've never met before. And if you ask, then what is the purpose of doing so? Well, if you look at society as things are moving uh, right now, uh, more and more, even after in the life after COVID, we're relying less on actually moving between locations. Now we have the technology to have the meetings with people, even this, what's happening now, this uh, events, right? We're connected from different locations, but we're all together in this room working together. And so now, thanks to these kind of apps through the metaverse, uh, we can also achieve the same thing in a classroom. So even having students physically in the classroom, but working together from different schools, you are, uh, you're now opening the opportunity for students to foster new collaborative skills with people they've never really met face to face. And so basically, uh, it's not just about uh, online teaching, but it's also about a, uh, kind of like fostering that different kind of approach to collaboration. Also, 
giving students the opportunity to work with people they've never met before. So even interpersonal skills. So there's so much happening now in this kind of uh, environment. And most of all, we're also opening the opportunity for schools, especially in my area in Nagano Prefecture. We have many schools that are so far apart, even like 20, 30 kilometers from like the, the near city. And those students, many of these schools, they're just like six students in a classroom or even three students in the classroom. So how can we expect them to actually like uh, move into a world where connected with uh, hundreds of people if their learning environment was so restricted. So now using this kind of technology, we're also connecting very small schools with bigger schools and giving the opportunity to these kids to actually work together with a, a bigger number of students. Um, moving with slide seven, another really important thing about these environments is how they allow for embedding apps, uh, in particular with the Google uh, applications, forms, sheets, docs, slides, uh, even learning apps like Quizlet can easily be integrated inside these metaverse platforms. And by doing so, we're really putting the students into a situation where they're using apps that can be also used in any kind of a work environment. Uh, moving to eight, slide eight, uh, one of the biggest challenges. So talking especially with teachers, because it, it's them kind of like, if it's me, uh, I kind of like played around. I've, I've been pretty active with this kind of research is one thing. But for teachers, it always says, well, it looks easy for the students since uh, they're pretty uh, fast at picking up things. but teachers might find this a little bit complicated to implement in a classroom. And it depends a lot on the, on the options. Uh, currently, there are many options, as Eric mentioned before, uh, like Gather Town is one of those. But there are even easier, um, more uh, gentle uh, learning, uh, not learning, but kind of like environment, uh, metaverse apps like uh, Wonder Me which has recently updated a lot of their uh, features and offers. So depending on what kind of like uh, skills you have also as a teacher, it's not what I'm trying to uh, kind of like put the, the focus here is many see the metaverse as something that they've, no it's too far, it's too a distance, uh, too distant from what they've been uh, raised with. But there are now many applications, many offer opportunities to implement this kind of technology pretty easily. So uh, one of the main goals of my research right now is trying to point out uh, how teachers, even working with uh, young learners, can start uh, playing around, implementing, testing this new technology in public schools with really low effort. And if you go to page 10, uh, as you can see, uh, there are many of these apps also offer pre-made or request-based templates. So you have very easy, they give you some questions. How many students are going to uh, use this space? Uh, what, uh, what's the purpose of this space? Uh, what kind of uh, activities are you going to run inside this room? And based on those questions, the system will automatically create a, a suitable environment. So uh, they don't really need to know, teachers don't really need to know how to do everything from zero. Uh, there's also, depending on what kind of, uh, what their goal is, there are different design approaches and different mechanics. Uh, for example, uh, what we're using now is a 3D environment. So uh, it might work better with uh, people working with technology and science. Uh, if you're looking more for kind of like uh, doing uh, online uh, tours and so on. But if, you, if your goal is to simply foster students' communicative skills, then probably uh, kind of like a top-down view, uh, two-dimensional environment might work better. But in any case, all of these apps, especially now because of the boom of the metaverse, there are many active online communities uh, teachers can reach out to. The Maverick SIG is one of them. 
So there's more and more people uh, teachers can rely on if they want to try something like this. Uh, going to slide 10 and going uh, almost to closing my presentation. Uh, what we're, my, my goal from now on is basically try to figure out ways to connect more and more remote areas in Japan. Uh, try to kind of like make this a little bit more systematic. How, uh, create a community where teachers can connect to and where we can also not only create collaborative projects between schools inside Japan, but also create international exchange projects. So uh, considering this is a synchronous environment, uh, we're probably looking at like Australia or Singapore, uh, China, that kind of countries, uh, the Philippines too. But uh, it's also one way of uh, putting the students in a situation of working not only with peers from the same country with the same mentality, but also working with people that have a different approach to learning and also different ideas. And one more thing, which is also the most important, is also try to collaborate and exchange uh, the data we're collecting from these lessons with the people that are uh, creating these platforms especially because many of these platforms that I've been working with, uh, they're geared towards uh, distance learn, uh, distant working. So uh, it's all about creating the office environment, whereas there's so much potential these apps have when applied to the educational environment. And what they, only, what I need, what they need from us is basically information and data. So by getting more, doing more presentations, but also more publications, hopefully things might change also on that side. And that's all from me. Uh, if you go to slide 11, uh, you can reach out to me through my Twitter account, although Twitter is in a, a bit of a chaos uh, these days, or you can also reach out to me through my email address. And that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, a big welcome to all of our presenters today, um, presenting for the first time in front of Maversig. So much good stuff happening here as well. Nick's been doing a bunch of stuff with Jolt, and I can see he's bringing a lot of kind of um, motivations and passion to his projects with uh, a lot of the things he's doing, yeah. And he mentioned a practical approach, which a lot of us in Maver share. And uh, a couple of things that resonated, I know there's a bunch of people in Maver doing stuff and are wanting to do stuff around international collaboration with our students. Um, uh, for example, Bobby and I are working on creating some kind of co collective, some consortium of learning labs around the world to use immersive education. Uh, Medas and I, uh, working together on a, a project called My Hometown, where they're, we're teaching students all around the world to make VR tours of their hometowns for international exchange and cultural um, uh, exchange as well. So th I think there's a lot of possibilities, not only with Nick, but with the, all of our presenters today to synergize their efforts. So let's give one more thanks to Nick, and we'll bring up our next presenter. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Okay. Again, uh, if you have questions, please put them into the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, you can put them into the Zoom uh, chat and we'll have uh, also people in the room. Keep your questions in mind and we'll curate them for a discussion at the end. All right. Uh, now let's bring up our final presenter. Um, we've been wanting to get Yukie uh, to present to us in Maver for, geez, I don't know, a couple of years now. <laughs> She's been really active uh, doing some stuff around VR and language learning. She's, uh, she teaches at Chuo University, and I see that she's also got some contacts with the, um, the meta people that are in Japan. So um, she was, um, I think, presented at the, the, the Metaverse conference that Meta put on last month as well. And um, she's going to be giving a talk today, Projects and Possibilities Using VR for English Education. Um, she's been doing some wonderful stuff 
focusing on language education, and so a lot of people in Jolt will appreciate um, the specific use of VR for mostly, I think, English language learning. So Yukie, Professor Yukie Saito, thanks very much. Uh, you have the floor. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much for the great introduction, Enrique. I feel very honored to be here as a presenter, and uh, I have been learning a lot from other presenters too. And I feel very excited to start uh, yeah, my uh, presentation. So, uh, as uh, Eric mentioned, it is, I'm Yuki Saito. I have been working for Chuo University, and uh, today I would like to talk about the uh, virtual reality project and possibilities of using VR for English education. So you can see the image where my students are wearing head-mount displays and in the center, you can see the virtual scene. And I really like this image very much. And as you can see, so uh, I have been working for uh, like a VR software company called Immerse because so Immerse is very uh, great for in, uh, learning English and teaching English. And so okay, I will start, uh, talk about the Immerse in more detail, so the next. Okay, okay, in the next presentation. So, and so uh, please so turn to like a uh, page two. Okay. And uh, so I'd like to so talk about the outline of today's talk. And so first, okay, so my profile and activities at ITR, and I will explain about what the ITR stands for. And uh, so far I have conducted a three VR project in the past, and I will talk about the three uh, virtual reality project. And also I have been doing another like a project and uh, I will talk about it and also I would like to like uh, talk about future uh, direction as a wrap up for my presentation. So um, could you, so, okay, um, page three, so could you take a look at page three on my slide, okay, page three on my slide, okay, so okay. So, okay, so as I mentioned, it, I have been working for Chio University. So, and uh, I work for uh, okay, the faculty called uh, Global Informatics. So, students have been learning information technology and laws related to information technology, such as kind of uh, uh, ethical use, uh, issues using uh, like artificial intelligence. So, it's a new department, and so okay, idea stand for information technology and law, and Ichigaya Tamachi Ding because uh, uh, this department is located near Ichigaya Station. Okay, so next slide, page four. Okay, page four. And so let me talk about my profile and activities at ITR. So I got a like a, a master's uh, MA in TISO from Columbia University, Teachers College of Columbia University. I got a PhD in education from Temple University. And uh, so I have been doing uh, okay, uh, lots of things at the uh, department. So okay, uh, my, uh, uh, one of the load is uh, like a coordinator of study abroad programs at the ITR. And also I'm in charge of a seminar which focuses on ed edtech and English education and English learning. And I have been doing a lot of uh, project with my students uh, who are uh, in my seminar. And I'm also a coordinator of, an integra of integrated English course for freshmen. As Eric kindly introduced okay, about it, so I got a support from Meta's Excel uh, program and the research fund program because, as you know, so Meta, so, uh, Facebook changed uh, its name from Facebook to Meta last year, and so and. Uh, yeah, and they say that they would like to focus on XR, like uh, metaverse, and uh, so it, they really wanted to focus on like uh, uh, promote, like uh, or support, so researchers uh, who are uh, involved in like uh, XR research. So uh, luckily, I, I was able to get support from Meta. And uh, I have been like a, a strategic advisor of Immers, so as I mentioned, which is a, like a VR, like a platform uh, for language learning. And page four, okay. so turn to page four, like effect, expected effects of using VR for English education. So, okay. 
So, okay, now so I would like to talk about uh, some uh, expected effects of using virtual reality for uh, English education. So, actually, now there are lots of studies which say uh, some benefits of using uh, virtual reality for English education, such as the lowering foreign language anxiety using avatars, uh, impact on long term memory retention. So, they can, so uh, it's often say that this. Uh, uh, student can kind of retain vocabulary better so uh, in virtual scenes because so they can kind of Im uh, they can have clear images of so okay, virtual reality scenes which uh, might be helpful uh, for students to remember vocabulary so effective voc vocabulary acquisition in virtual context improvement of motivation increased learners engagement and active participation in virtual scenes and also we are may lower foreign language anxiety and it might lead to improvement of the speaking. These are like a kind of expected effects of using virtual reality for English education. And from so, okay, slide six, okay, on slide six. So, okay. So on the slide six, so I so kind of so summarized like the past two year project. As I mentioned, it I have been using Immers so for all of the project, and so characteristics of Immers is that the student can choose their own avatars, and there are lots of like uh, scenes teachers can choose, such as an airport or a fast food restaurant, or like a customs or like. A Okay. or maybe just like a, a okay, supermarket and so on. So, and you know, so it's difficult to realize like a context in an EF environment like in Japan, but so by using so like a scenes of immersion, so we can create a meaningful context where students can learn English in, in a more meaningful way. I conducted, so, as I mentioned, I have conducted so, three projects so far. We are English lessons by native English speakers to students in sight of Senior. And so following that, uh, we are a collaborative project, student as teachers and learners. And finally, so we are uh, pre-lessons before online study abroad programs. And so briefly, I would like to talk about each project. So as I mentioned it in the first project, my uh, student so uh, in in my seminar so took uh, okay, uh, immersed English lesson by native English speakers. I collected uh, like uh, the following data such as TOEIC speaking as a pretest and post test and questionnaire about uh, foreign language anxiety as a, like a post questionnaire. Uh, sorry, uh, as a pre questionnaire and a post questionnaire. Student also write a journal. Student also wrote a journal with can do about VR scenes. And so okay, now I would like to, so page eight, could you, sorry, I, I, could you, okay, could you turn to page eight? Okay, so now I would like to talk about the okay, case, so kind of the result of the first project, okay? English lessons by native English speakers to students inside of the seminar. So I would like to share the summary of, uh, of the results. So, so according to like a pre and post questioning, students were able to lower foreign language anxiety, increase confidence in speaking English. So the, the number of participants were five, and they took uh, like a pre and post uh, TOEIC speaking test. Among the okay, eight students, so five students were able to increase the uh, uh, scores of TOEIC speaking test. And so okay, you can see my student comment. So I had a, as if <laughs> I had a fun as if I was a kid again. Like I could speak more easily because each member's face is avatar. So it seems so avatar's effect was huge. So student felt so less stress stressed out because of okay, and you know Japanese students uh, tend to be afraid of making a mistake and uh, they are not confident but so the use of avatar was helpful so that's so in okay, the second comment so as you can see in the second comment so okay, the use of avatar seemed to be very helpful 
So I wrote a paper, so and I okay, and so you can see my paper, Cortiso Proceedings. Okay. Okay, so okay, yes, page, yes, so on page eight, you can see the okay, comments on page eight English lesson by native English speakers to students inside the seminar. So you can see the comments okay, uh, in the gray okay, boxes. There are three comments, as you can see. On page nine, so could you turn to page nine? So we are a collaborative project. Okay, so page nine. And so as I mentioned it in the second project, the students worked as teachers and learners. So uh, in the first project, my se uh, seminar student experienced so in, uh, real English lessons as learners. And uh, I asked them to create their own lessons. So, and uh, in that project, so for a year student who uh, experienced real lesson as learners, so implemented English lessons using VR and they taught English uh, using the same virtual reality platform. Okay, and for third year student planned VR English lessons and for third year student taught English to eight second year student. And they made a presentation about the project at the department and they wrote us and submitted a collaborative report. Okay, so now, so would you turn to page 10? Okay, could you turn to page 10? So, okay, so the second project is based on like uh, the revised Bloom's taxonomy. So I wanted to, them to kind of so, okay, uh, use like uh, okay, higher uh, order thinking skills in addition to lower order thinking skills. So for example, so uh, as you can see the, in the middle, so okay, uh, okay, as for like lower order thinking skills, so okay, they remember what, uh, they, uh, what they learned in the VR lesson. They also understand the pros and the cons of the VR lessons by remembering the lesson they took as student. And so they applied so, okay, uh, okay, what they uh, okay, learned as English learners using VR and planning to maximize the pros and minimize the cons of VR lesson. And they also created so, their own virtual reality lessons. And they conducted, so they offered English lessons to the second year student. They also analyze, evaluate their own lessons. So now uh, please turn to page 11. So this is a scene so where students are learning how to make uh, okay, English lessons using immersive platform. So they had a chance to learn English lessons okay, okay, from the teacher of immersive. So as you can see on page 11, okay, on page 11. Okay, then, so could you turn to page 12, okay. So on page 12, so you can see so real scenes of virtual reality. So okay, on the left side, this is a, like a custom. Okay, on the right side, so you can see like a fast food restaurant. Actually, so okay, I really like Immerse very much is, uh, because students can interact with other students as avatars. They can also interact with objects in virtual reality scenes. So, okay, textures, okay, uh, I mean, so you can see the uh, cash, so and this uh, cash register can be used and students can, okay, drinks using a remote controls and they can eat okay, hamburgers okay, using a yeah, remote control. That's why so in, okay, in virtual scenes of immerse, students can interact with other participants also with object in those scenes. Okay, so, so okay, at, at the final kind of okay, project, I would like to talk about the last one. So page 13, Okay, page 13, page 13. And so we are, uh, we are uh, pre-lessons before online study abroad program. So, okay, uh, I'm a uh, coordinator of study abroad programs at ITL, and I was supposed to send my student to Silicon Valley, but I couldn't do that because of COVID-19. But so uh, it was offered online, it was an electric, 
electric, uh, electric program, there were 13 participants. So as a first, uh, as a pre-training, they listened to lectures from IT companies in Japan, such as Meta, Google, Microsoft, and so on. And following that, so I offered virtual reality English lessons, including discussion, debate, presentation, using the same platform. And after that, there was a, a main program. And on page 14, so could you take a look at on page 14? Okay. On page 14, on page 14, you can see the contents of the virtual uh, KVR English lessons, like a self-introduction and discussion, discussion, debate, and presentation. So I included the, like a like a debate topic or discuss, discussion topic, which are related to information technology, because they had a chance to listen to the lectures uh, from like uh, business people of Meta, uh, like uh, Meta, like uh, Microsoft and Google and so on. So they talked about uh, like uh, such as like uh, they, they talked about the topics such as do you think virtual reality will be popular? And so on page 15, so on the next slide, on the next slide, you can see the image of virtual reality scene okay, where a student uh, making a debate. So I divided them into two groups. Okay, on the, okay. So maybe I should move to, okay. So on page 17, so okay, on page 17, pre lesson before online study abroad program, summary of the result. Okay, take a look at page 17, pre lesson before online study abroad program, summary of the result. Actually, I couldn't do any, okay, so kind of a so, uh, positive result. However, so students were able to have positive opinion about the VR and the public speaking lesson. So I wrote a paper about it, so, okay, and you can find my paper, Coffee Proceedings, 2020. And on page 18, I, after okay, uh, uh, I talk about the current project and the future direction, I would like to wrap up my presentation. So please take a look at page 18. Okay, so page 18. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay, current VR project and the future direction. Okay, can, can you see it now? Page 18. <laughs> current VR project and the future direction. So okay, in my so, okay, uh, English lessons, the students have been also learning English using uh, okay, like a Google cupboard because so headman displays are still expensive. They have been like uh, using a Google cupboard and they have been okay, learning like uh, SDGs, uh, you, okay, watching 360s videos related to SDGs. And also students now are uh, teaching English to young learners using emails as a PC version. And so they have been doing like a VR exploration project okay, by students. They, they have been exploring spatial, edge space, engaged door, and so on. And uh, I'm hoping to do like a telecollaboration in, uh, in virtual reality using Immers, VR chat, and other so VR like a okay, platforms. Okay. So, okay, I should stop finishing my presentation. So, okay, so thank you very much for listening to my talk. Okay, thank you. Sorry, maybe I, I was not able to like show my slides on time. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yukie. Um, Lots of cool stuff, lots of collaboration, and we see that there are already some common themes, some common threads, ideas, and projects, even from our three presenters today. I think that there might be some deeper opportunities for just the speakers alone to um, collaborate on some of the things that they're doing, because uh, there are some themes that came out, and hopefully we'll get into those uh, in our discussion time coming up right about now. Um, before we get into discussion, I'd like to invite everybody that's in VR to the stage, please, if you're around. I'm going to 
um, so we can see who's talking and I'm going to take a couple of snapshots of everybody <laughs> that's in VR for for our records maybe put it up on the website so get in front of that screen there <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right face Fa face me uh, yes yeah. face me is that okay is my position all right you're looking great i think everybody's looking good okay. all right i'm okay. going to take Wonderful. a shot here three two Okay, I got it. Beautiful. Did I have my eyes closed? <laughs> it's possible. You are. You, the, these avatars do blink from time to time, so maybe maybe I should take another one. I don't know. <laughs> Adam, would you like to come up to the uh, front too? Yes, please. Ad, is Adam here still? Yes, I can see him. Yes. All right. I think we're ready for another shot. Just one moment here. Sure. Group. Just going to save that one so I can just get us another one. All right. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> here we go. Let's see here. Three, two, one, woohoo! All right, and Yay. I'm going to capture Thank this you. one more time. Let's see here. Three, two, one. All right, so I got myself into that that last one. <laughs> All right, cool. Beautiful. All right. Uh, if you guys want to stay stay where you are, um, everybody can turn on your mics right now if you'd like. If you you don't have to, of course, but. Um, I'm going to invite anybody to either raise your hand or turn on your mic and let us know if you have a question. First, I'd like to um, ask Merasa if there are any questions in the Zoom chat or questions in the physical okay. room, so we can address okay. those first. Beginning with the physical room, we have one, one attendee here with us. Thank you. Yes. Rich. Great meeting you, Marasa. Thank you for being with us. Hey, Rich, try to get to the closest you can to the mic so we can hear you in VR. Okay. I don't have a question. It's all right. But I enjoyed the presentation. Okay. So Rich is saying that he doesn't have a question, but he enjoyed the presentation. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rich. For That's great. Anybody in the room would like to, to uh, ask a topic? Speakers can ask questions to each other. I have a couple questions, but I was going to wait mine to um, the end to give everybody a chance to speak if they should want or need. So I, listening to all these projects, I was thinking there's a lot of room for collaboration. Mm, and yes. I would love to hear more about what um, so it was my first time hearing about the work that Amini has been doing. So definitely I'm interested in everyone's work here, but I've heard a little more um, about maybe Yukia's work and I've worked with Nick myself, but all that Amini was talking about was very interesting and new to me. So I, I feel like the use of AI, uh, chatbots, and uh, um, these newer technologies with immersive environments can create a lot of potential in the future. There is already, yeah. Maybe, yeah, some of these initiatives. Yes. Yeah, I would love to collaborate. And, uh, share. Um, yeah, I so, yes, yeah, Rob, you... go ahead. Um, you got a little echo there. Maybe you're close to the mic in the room if you want to talk. Avatar. Right. Avatar. <laughs> I'm going to be speaking through Merasa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your very interesting presentations. I don't know I, if that's oh, yeah. Okay. You can hear me now. Um, I could see like that the co one of the common themes that I've seen from your presentations uh, would be collaborations 
uh, among students from you know, different institutions, right? Through the metaverse or through VR. And I was wondering if you, you guys are familiar with um, COIL, a collaborative online international learning. I was thinking maybe we can kind of, this group can like form a project, I mean, do a project together on COIL uh, in the metaverse, because uh, I'm not really sure if there are a lot of people doing it right now. And we can be like. Yeah, can I give a comment about it? Oh, yes, sure. Yeah, so, so thank you very much for the later comment. I think actually, so I have been doing, so I have been kind of so trying to do like a tele collaboration with the other like uh, universities in the US. And uh, I think we have been the kind of first step. And uh, I would like to expand it to like a COIL project using uh, virtual reality. Yeah, definitely there's a possibility. And uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's, I think they have, they haven't uh, yeah, many like uh, studies. So where like uh, they have been uh, kind of exploring the possibility of so uh, coil so in VR so yeah so definitely if you are interested in that please so let me know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yes, I like that idea. Yeah, um, we're uh, Bobby and I have been trying to work out a couple of things around coil too. He's been doing some coil stuff with his courses in the Philippines and. Um, we're trying to incorporate these new labs that we're building to see if we can utilize more immersive technologies yes. in the coil process. So that's, that's an exciting, exciting frontier, I think, uh, especially moving forward because these the coil research, I mean, the need for it, the demand for it is going up uh, since the pandemic hit and even still uh, strong after the pandemic is st starting to teter out. Yeah, the, the biggest uh, challenge yeah. for me is uh, bringing coil to elementary schools. Uh -huh. That's a pretty, many schools are still pretty new to the concept. So what I've been doing is basically doing some trial runs to see if things work. And I'm not really focused just on the focusing like on uh, language acquisition. It's, I'm trying to get teachers to use this technology yeah. also for other yeah. subjects as well. This is a common thread, uh, I think, as well, yeah. too. It's even uh, not just public schools, but universities as well. Getting buy-in from administration to budget, you know, decision makers to, you know, yeah. faculty members using it more. These, these are all struggles, I think, not just with immersive technology, but technology in general, probably. But, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we, Eric, uh, this is Rich Lee. Uh, I'm, I'm the uh, sole person in the... Okay. Hi, hey, Rich. Room. Um <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to ask you, what do you think the, the cause of that pushback is? Um, well, I think broadly speaking, um, the, the, one of the big things is just change, right? Being able to you know, onboard yourself to a new way of doing things. Many times, if you're gonna be using immersive technology or even in distance learning, you need to rethink some of the approaches you do if you're, for example, teaching in the classroom or you have a specific way of presenting information. You kind of have to revisit a lot of the things that you're doing, which means you need, you need a little extra effort, you need a little extra training, you need a little extra onboarding onto these platforms and using them. And so all of those things, I mean, together, kind of create a little bit of you know learning curve, a little bit of um, a walled garden in, in approaches in your pedagogy as, as a teacher. So those are just some things that I think is, I think normal for most teachers. Yeah, that sounds right. I think uh, given that uh, I think just even moving into uh, online learning management systems was, uh, th there was a lot of um, problems related <laughs> to that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just overall getting used to all the new tech and going to VR was maybe maybe a big step. I'm really interested in what everyone presented about today. I wanted to thank all of you for your uh, presentations. Well, thank you, My Rich. school is moving towards VR. They've, they've created a metaverse uh, version of their school and uh, they're asking mm -hmm. me to help uh, set up uh, classes and courses and international uh, a study abroad program with the University in America. And so I will be following what you guys are doing <laughs> from now on. I know very little about all of this, but, um, but yeah, I just wanted to express my appreciation. 
Maybe I didn't explain it, but this room, this VR room that we're in right now, is actually a digital twin of a lecture hall on our physical campus at the Kyoto University of Foreign Studies. And so okay. we took a we took that. This is an actual. It's almost uh, meter for meter, chair by chair replication of that actual physical space. And so we're going to be experimenting with mixed reality. So having people actually physically in the room and then a digital twin of it in virtual space and seeing how we can, you know, integrate and get collaboration between virtual and, and physical spaces. Right. That sounds fast, fantastic. I'm wondering, um, and this is a question for maybe everyone, because I think what the focus of everything has been on this pedagogy and possibly, um, you know, how to implement this from a teacher's perspective. How are the students reacting to VR? I, I, I know that uh, Sato Sensei said uh, that, uh, uh, Saito Sensei said, Sato, sorry. Saito Sensei, sorry. yes. Saito Sensei, Saito. 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 I'm sorry. Saito, yes. um, is there many people on? <laughs> I, uh, I, I heard you say that uh, the students had a positive experience. You didn't, you didn't see that uh, represented in their TOEIC scores. The pre post uh, pre and post yeah yeah in the last yeah project so i think that just they took like uh, only three virtual reality lessons that's why and uh, so i they didn't take uh, like a uh, post speaking test immediately after so uh, three VR lessons so i think i couldn't evaluate it we are so in the coming next uh, in the coming so project i will implement another like uh, Post a speaking test immediately after so we are English lesson. At the same time, to increase the number of virtual reality lessons. And uh, however, I didn't include uh, some negative kind of comments from the student, but I have to say that so uh, many students got sick so, okay, because of a head mount display. They felt, okay, the, they felt uh, kind of like uh, motion sickness, and uh, mm -hmm. and some students so, okay, say that the uh, head mount displays were too heavy to carry for a long time. And uh, as you know, so uh, head mount displays are still expensive. So there are something which needs to be overcome and uh, and but we have to, but still i i can see more possibilities of integrating virtual reality into education and into english education and at the same time yeah at the same time so we don't have to kind of you know so buying uh, advanced displays very expensive, but uh, so mm -hmm. students can start so virtual reality uh, using their own PCs like we are doing today. So mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, letting them like uh, experience virtual reality in their own PC might be the first step. Oh, well, thank you. You answered my next question. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank yeah, you very it's, much. yeah, it, it's, um, I say this often with this question, right? It's, <clears throat> it's not, it's novel approach and, using these to kind of technologies for many years now, I mean, it's really comes down still to the content from which you're conveying through virtual and augmented reality. If it's, it's, it's novel in the fact that it's a new way to kind of experience media, but if the media or the contents aren't interesting, that, that novelty wears off very quickly. So there's no, there's, it's not a shortcut for developing good, engaging content. Okay, if I may, um, I have another question. One thing that piqued my interest was um, the funding that you got or the support that you got from Immerse and Meta, because we, we also want to kind of propose some projects in the future. Um, would you have some tips for us <laughs> on how to kind of propose those projects for funding or for support from those companies? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think they they have been focusing on like a language education. So like, and I think uh, it's better to include some kind of gains in speaking or in, in listening. So I think they want to kind of include like a, the kind of result, objective result in terms of speaking games or like a vocabulary acquisition. If you can include like a proposal where they, you can investigate like a speaking games or like a, or like a vocabulary acquisition, yeah, I think they will consider it, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, this is another, this is a follow-up question. 
Uh, were they the ones who approached you to propose or were, were, was there a website that you visited and submitted your proposal? Uh, actually, so I think I was the, uh, the first or the second one who started using Emrus. I have been using Emrus for two or three years already. And uh, so I think uh, they wanted to support me because so it was not uh, so kind of well known yet. And uh, they wanted to kind of establish it. so their products or their service. So that's why they actually they sub <laughs> they uh, I mean so okay. right. yes I, I was not the one <laughs> who asked for support. I Immerse actually Immerse, were, were, they targeted Japan as their one of their places that they really wanted yeah. to focus on when they started getting going. I think four or five years ago, and yeah. so they reached out to several people around Japan. Uh, in higher education. I, I was actually reached out to uh, by the uh, Immerse people, but I didn't really follow up. And Immerse, I think they just started a whole kind of group of, of teachers that are now are kind of actively uh, curating proposals for, for the company. So they actually have a few people, a few teachers now, a group of researchers. I think UK might be part of that group. Yes, kind of. Yes, I, I have known like uh, researchers there. And uh, yeah, they know a lot about the second language acquisition, and uh, I think they are like uh, uh, experts in terms of research. So I think we're designed, they welcome like a well designed hmm. research, I guess. And I think another Maver that everyone might know, Ewan Bonner, is also on that group for Immerse, I think. Right, yes. right, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, and uh, they are planning to kind of expand its service to uh, teaching Japanese or French and uh, maybe another language. So maybe if you can kind of make a proposal to, yeah, kind of to teach other languages such as Japanese or like a French, I think uh, maybe they will consider it. Because it's now, now I think there are uh, lots of researchers who, who, who are like uh, doing research so, uh, in terms of like uh, teaching English. So if you are interested in teaching another language, it might be a kind of, yeah, you can write a better kind of proposal, I guess. This was one of the themes that was, yeah, proposals. Um, I think that research group for Immerse would be very good too. A meta and um, Reality Labs sent out a couple of calls for proposals last year, but I think in general, their um, their their focus on education um, isn't completely the best. I don't know; it's just my opinion. But um, it's harder to get a hold of people in Meta. So I'm, we're we're all impressed that you had got some contacts with with Meta Japan as well. Um, if I could. There was th that was the theme actually. Well, on the same tangential thing, Nick actually brought this up as well because he, in his presentation, he talked about trying to get conversations going with platform providers to give them feedback to better have their products kind of catered to uh, yeah. educational context, right? And so, yeah, yeah well, what what does an ed the conversations look like? Because I'm actually developing a few myself and trying to develop them specifically for education. There's a lot of kind of butting heads with trying to make them sustainable with business models. So like one big business model for right now is, you know, collecting as much information as possible, which doesn't, and then trying to exploit that data for profit in the future, which doesn't really work too well, for, especially in public schools. So what does that conversation look like with... So. Yeah, I had the opportunity of talking directly to uh, some members behind Gather Town uh, mm -hmm. as part of a beta project. And I'm so sorry to jump in, but our uh, time for using this room is over. So it's okay. okay. You can keep talking in VR, of course. Actually, have yeah. The projector and Actually, yeah. this is probably a good time. I'm going to cut down the the um, the live stream as well. So. Um, sorry to cut you off, Nick. We'll, we can keep talking, but Let's, just just yeah, give me one one minute to close. opportunity to have a different chat about it. Right. I'm gonna. Yeah. Thank Thank you very much, everyone. So oh. okay. Thank you very okay. much for this wonderful opportunity. All right. All right. And I'm gonna. It's only me. You two, everybody out there watching on YouTube, watching on the net, I'm gonna close down the the feed right now. Thanks for watching this presentation much. on the Maver learning forum. Please come to maver.site to revisit all of the materials that you saw today as far as slides and speaker bios and profiles and follow along on 
uh, hashtag Maver on your favorite social media platform for Sorry. posts and discussions <laughs> around this as well. All right, guys. Um, uh, we can stay in VR and chat for longer. That's it for now. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Very good. Well done.